good morning so what I've been doing in my free time lately is making granny squares because I had never made them before and once I made one I just really wanted to keep making them and not really do anything else which you know of course there's responsibilities anyway we're not gonna go into that um so this is what they look like and I've been doing these simple granny squares where it's just four color changes and then they actually line up almost perfectly with my bloom squares for the pillow pattern that I just wrote so I don't know that was kind of fun so the squares are almost the exact same size as these granny squares if you add like just an extra round of single crochet around the outside and then you can have this nice little accent color it looks really pretty and then they're just joined together with um, single crochet because all the edges are different colors so that just kind of helps tie them together and make them look a little tidier than if you were to slip stitch to join them or some other way and then you get this nice little braided effect okay so I'm babbling but what I wanted to show you was the granny squares right here, and they don't take very long. And they're very fun to make, and they're very simple, which is nice. Because once you, once you get the pattern of how the stitches go, then you need to really kind of just sit there and zone out and just relax, which is nice. So to start one, I'm going to make a slip stitch. Like so. And then chain four. One, two, three, four. And then slip stitch back into the very first chain. And that's going to make a ring. So just slip stitch like that. If you can see it. Will it zoom in? Will it zoom in? Anyway. So then. After that, I'm going to chain three, and we're going to do three, two. Start off with two double crochets into the ring. Oh, don't split. Okay, one, and then two, and then you're going to chain two, and this is going to be a corner. And then you'll do three double crochets and then two chains for that corner. You can kind of scooch them around. You can see it's already making one, one nice little corner here. And you're going to do three more. Double crochet into the circle for the side. And then chain two. And then three more. Double crochet here. going to chain two for your last corner and I forgot to mention but when you when you start your after you make your ring you're going to crochet three chains to start to get your height up to start these other two double crochets well this chain th three counts as a double crochet so that's why you only do two double crochets on this side because your chain three counts as a DC Okay, so then you're going to slip stitch into the one to the third chain at the top. And this is where we're going to change our color. So I want to go from yellow to this nice green. Give it a nice sort of ombre color fade effect. Okay, so you did your chain two and you're going to slip stitch the new color 
into the last two loops. So pull through like this and then chain one and then you're going to want to tighten up the yellow and the green so that there's no gap. Then one, two, three, and then you're going to do two double crochets into that corner space. Like that. And then you're going to chain one. And then three double crochets into this corner chain space. Three, one, two, and then three more. And that'll make this corner. Three, and then a chain one. So that's that's the pattern of the stitches, is three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, that's your corner. And then for the sides in between, you'll do your three DCs and then one chain. And then we're back to another corner, so three double crochets for this side of the corner, and then your chain two. And you can scoot your DCs over a little if they're getting a little too far over. One, two, three, and then a chain. And we'll start three double crochets. Start this next corner. I'm kind of going back and forth like should I go slower so you guys can see or should I just get it done so that the video doesn't take forever I don't know we'll just make it and see how it goes and the last finishing up this corner so three double crochet here and remember your chain three at the beginning counts as a, a double crochet. So that's one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we're going to change to this, this blue color right here. And after you're done with the color, you can just cut your yarn and leave it a little longer. Eh, say maybe like four inches so that you have enough, enough tail to weave in into the back. So to start our next color, let me get these guys out of the way, okay. So, and again, oh, let's see, oh, uh-oh, I cut my yarn already. Chain two, and then we're going to slip stitch into the top of the third chain. at the beginning and we're going to pull a loop of the new color through that third chain and the last loop that was on your hook and chain one and that's how you switch colors well, that's how I switch colors I've seen it done slightly different depending on who's doing it okay so you join your color and then chain three and then three or two, two more double crochets into this corner chain space. One, two, and then chain one. And then you're gonna move over and three DCs into this chain space here. Two and three, chain one. And then double, three double crochets into this corner. One, two, three, and then chain two. And then three double crochets here. One, two, and three, and then chain one. 
three double crochets in this side chain space. Like so, chain one, three more double crochets, two, three, chain two, Two. Well, we're doing pretty good. I'm only at 10 minutes. Okay, and then we did our chain one, and then we're going to yarn over and start another three double crochets here. Three double crochets, and then the chain one. And we're back at our corner again, so three double crochets on this side of the corner, and then we'll do a chain two, and then three more double crochets on this half of the corner. Two, three, and then chain and you could keep making these squares We'll keep adding rows to these squares. Rounds, rounds, because you're, you're doing a round. A round. Um, sorry, what was I saying? Oh, so you could make these even bigger. I stopped at four rounds so that they would be the same size as the, the bloom squares. These guys. Um, but you could just keep making them bigger because the, the pattern repeat for the stitches is so simple and I totally totally understand why people love granny squares so much because they're really just they give you a lot of room to play with colors and and really I've got a lot of leftover yarn now so I've got all these leftover colors that I can use just to make all these squares, which is really what I did and why there's so many colors all over the place in this blanket because I just had a little bit of this and this and this and it was enough to make all these different squares and together it's really colorful and pretty. Okay, so the next one we're going to find the one, two, three, third chain at the beginning and then we're going to join this next color. I was wanting to use no we'll just use this one it's fine it's an example you'll be able to see I think Let's see can you see that color very well yeah I'm gonna see if it's okay because if I go too dark then it's really kind of hard to see the stitches okay so when you join a color just make sure you tighten up the new color and the color you are using so chain three and then double two go two double crochets into that same chain space in the corner. And then you're gonna chain one to start your next three double crochets here. I looked at my time and I was like, oh I've only done ten minutes, I can slow down, but <laughs> these don't take very long, but I feel like the videos that I usually enjoy watching are a little shorter. Well, depending on what it is. Just depends on what it is. I made a doily the other day, um, just crocheting along with a YouTube video. Oh, whose video was it? Christina. Oh, I'll have to look that up. But, um, but it was nice just to sit there and watch, like, okay, this is how you do this round. And then you crochet that round. And then you do a little more pause video, crochet that round. It's very soothing. And then you have a nice little, well, I had a nice little doily to go under my new fruit bowl that I got from Mixed Potter. He's a local Minneapolis artist that I just really like his work. Really like his work. Like, he's just one of those people that's a lot of attention to detail and he very into his craft and it shows it shows in the pieces that he does he's very interested in the materials and 
working out ways to get different effects and adding minerals to the enamels so that they, they make blooms and crystal-like sort of effects. And, oh, we are almost done. See, I'm just chatting away, babbling, really, because like once you get what you're doing, because it's really simple, it's just three double crochets with a chain, one chain between them, and then when you get to the corner, you have three double crochets and then a ch two chains. Oop. My little alarm popped up that just to let me know, hey, you gotta start the day soon. Because right now it is very early in the morning. My family is sleeping, so it is very quiet, which is probably why I'm talking so low, in case anybody was wondering. And I think they are, I hear someone waking up in the other room. One, two, yep, three, and a chain, and a one, and a two, and a three, and one, two, three, and here's our chain two, and I don't know if you can hear the shower running, but if you can, uh, sorry about that. One, two, three. <clears throat> oh, okay, so <laughs> just to tell you what I'm doing. Oops. So I did my last three double crochets and then my chain two for the corner. And then we're gonna slip stitch into the third chain at the beginning, the third top chain, and then slip stitch to connect and close up that round, but since this is the last round that we're doing, we're not gonna join a new color. But, so cut the yarn and pull it straight up so that you have this nice tail. I think I cut it a little long, but it's been, oop, I pulled this too tight. So I'm gonna loosen up this last loop a little bit so that it's sort of the same, same size as the surrounding stitches. And I don't know how well you guys can see this. I should have used a different color for this part. Oh well. Okay, so take your darning needle. <clears throat> and then to finish up the round, you're just going to do an invisible join, which you can look up how to do an invisible join. It's not, um, it's not difficult at all, but it does, it makes it, um, it closes up your round so it looks seamless. So you can't see where it starts or where it ends. So this is your last loop. You're going to kind of lay it flat. And what you're going to do is you're going to create an, a manual stitch here. So you're going to skip this, lay this one down, this last loop down flat, skip the second one, and then go under the front and the back loop of this stitch. So you'll pull down and just sort of make sure that your yarn is sort of laying flat over that stitch that you skipped. And then you're going to go straight down, back into the loop, that last loop, and then there you go. Can you see? And then you can just adjust it so that it's, it matches the other stitches around it. I hope you can see this. Maybe... Whoa! Look at the camera. So I can tell that's a little fuzzy. The autofocus on my phone is not that great. But anyway, so that's, oh, and I will show you. So you have, you're gonna have a couple of tails since there's so much open space. Um, you can't really crochet in your tails very well. But you just go to the back and um, when you pull through that first time after the invisible join, don't tighten it down too much because you'll crush that stitch that you just made. But so just back stitch a couple of times. And with these, 
I like to kind of go back in through the double crochets where they're wrapping around the previous color. I don't know, it just feels more secure, like if it, oop. And then tug a little bit and trim. And then, okay, so then you'll do that with all of these little tails, but um, you also have to do it for the center ring. So just pull it until it's closed up. And then you can use your darning needle or tapestry needle, whatever you want to call it, and just sort of weave in your tail and just backstitch a little couple of two, three times to make sure that it doesn't come loose. And I lost count because I was talking, so I think that was two times and three times and four times. <laughs> it's not coming loose. I hope. It, no, it won't. It won't come loose. Okay, so and then this this is your square that you just made. This is your square. It's very pretty. And you can play, like I said, you can play with colors. There's a lot of room to play with colors. Like this one is kind of florally. It's got this sort of corally pinky orange and then yellow and green and like this really pale light sky blue. And this one is just all blue. So dark blue, medium blue, medium light, light blue. Oh, and this one. <laughs> so the white and the, the neon pink and purple and some dark purple. Like the possibilities are endless. Oh, let's see. So I did one that was all white, yellow, orange, and then teal in the center, some yellowy colors, and then this one. And get some of this stuff out of the way. And I will just show you a couple more color combinations, and I've got kind of loose ends here and there, because I'm still joining them. This one, I don't know. It reminds me of plastic, plastic toys <laughs> that I've seen. So yeah, like um, any any colors. Oh, and here's one that I did that has a little bit of jewel tone variegated yarn. There's all sorts of, and then this one. <laughs> that neon green is so bright. Oh my gosh. And then oh, some more, another kind of ombre sort of rainbow square. And then one with some dark around the edges. And then a pink. Let's see what else. Oh, did I show you this one where it's kind of the reverse of the other blue one where it's light on the outside and it goes into dark in the center? Oh, and then, ooh, I did some green ones. Those are really pretty. I like this one with the neon green in the center. But it just, it looks really nice with the bloom squares, I thought. Like it's just a little bit more, oh, and this one I like too. <laughs> but I think orange and blue always look really kind of nice together. They're complementary colors, they're supposed to complement one another. And then this one is that peachy pink with some teal. Okay. Anyway, so this is what I've been doing lately and it is kind of a nice way to relax at the end of the day and just get in some color therapy we're at the end of winter here and everybody I think is tired and just ready to go outside. We had a couple days of nice weather and then it's supposed to get cold again so I'm a little sad about that but it won't last forever. Eventually we'll have spring and summer and it'll be nice and everybody will be outside all the time. So it's happening. It's We just have to wait this last little bit. Okay well so that was it. That was Granny Squares and I hope you guys like this and um, I plan on doing more videos as I have time. But um, <laughs> right now the big thing is just getting taxes done. Like that's so needlessly painful, but uh, it's intentionally made that way, but that's a whole nother rant. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna stop talking now.
You guys have a good day. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye.